Hey folks, what's going on? Live stream, just gonna get Donnie online here. Everybody. What's going on? Live stream today, Metal Voice, last minute. Talking riot and accept. Where's my accept out? There it is. Donnie's gonna join us, Donnie Van Stavern, Stavern. We'll ask him exactly how to pronounce his name. Here it is, Accept. This was our last album, Blind Rage, live in Europe. Good friends with the band, with Gabby, with Wolf, and Peter. So, we are waiting. What's up first? George, what's happening, man? Greek. George, are you from Greece or are you from uh, North America? So, let's get Donnie online. Let me just find him here. Hold on a sec, people. Just give me a little bit of time here. I'm going to tell him I sent him a link. Link sent. Can you hear me? George, can you hear me? George, can you hear me? Test, test. Can you hear me? Dragon Force. Sup? All right, let's get Donnie online. Donnie, I'm just waiting. We just did a test right before. And uh, usually before we do these things, you got to test it because everybody's got, you know, iPhones and computers and who knows what operating system they're using. I don't know. And you just got to make sure you do this because then I'll just be talking to myself. So you guys can hear me? Good. Good. All right, there's Donnie. There he is. There's the man, the myth, the legend in his own mind. <laughs> this is the fastest I've ever done a live stream. We've basically decided like in five minutes. I know. It's crazy, huh? It's a crazy, wacky world that we live in. All right, man. Hung over too. So, How you doing, brother? Good, good, good. I'm just going to increase the volume here so you hear it a little bit better. Cool. All right. All right. So, you know, you've you you played know, festivals. Play you've played multiple shows with shows, so many with bands. So many bands. I, I, have you played with Accept? Love Accept. Have you ever played you with them? Played have you ever been on the same bill? bill? Uh, yeah, we've done some uh, festivals with them. We actually uh, we're gonna do some dates with them uh, for the the previous record to this new one, and um, it just kind of like fell through for some reason. Um, I've always liked the band, uh, you know, growing up, of course, uh, Restless and Wild and stuff like that. I really really dug that stuff and breaker some of the early stuff was really groovy yeah, um, yeah. great band influential on me when i was a younger pup before i joined riot and um uh really cool i actually saw udo like on this last tour like maybe a month ago a couple months ago it's unbelievably excellent but uh yeah i love except and uh we definitely shared the stage with them um not on a tour but on some festivals and stuff um, All right, cool. So here's this was our last this album. Last album. Our live album. Live album. You're Donnie. Yeah. You're Donnie. Yep. It's a great live it's album. A, great live album. It's a nice combination, a nice of, the combination of the old with the new. Now they have a new single out, yeah, right? and I want to talk about Riot, but before we finish, let's you know, let's put two brains together, two metal brains together. What did you think of the new song "Rise of Chaos"? The rise of chaos. Uh, it was cool. Um, it almost sounds like it does, you know, it's the accept style for sure. Straight ahead, power chord rock. Uh, that song, um, it, it's kind of reminiscent of something from the early days. Uh, I like the cool breakdown in the middle. They got this little uh, breakdown thing that they do. It's really cool. Um, Wolf always writes that style, you know, he's, you know, he's the writing guy for the band and, you know, it sounds really cool. It's, to me, it just sounds like something, you know, that, uh, you know, would have come out back then, you know, it's in the style of accept. It sounds like except, uh, Mark Tonio, he sounds great too. You know, um, when he stepped in, you know, I always thought his style was really cool and, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, he does a great vocal performance on it. I mean, uh, it's pretty cool. You know, I mean, it's accept, you know, that's what it sounds like. It's, uh, it's their style. Like I said, you know, 
for me, I agree with you, man. It's accept what you'd expect from accept. It's exactly what it is. It's another brand new hard hitting song. Uh, the producer is Andy Schnee. And Wolf Hoffman said this in the news. He said, it's not going to change ever dramatically. Because as long as Peter and I sort out and write the songs, it's going to sound very much like it. And that's what we're going for. That's what we're going for. And he yeah, also Peter's said, still in the band too, right? Kind of Sorry? Sorry? Peter's still in the band too. Peter Ball. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, yeah. It's it's Herman it's Frank and Stephens who are actually the ones who went out, out of the band. And Uwe yeah. Lewis and Christopher yeah. Williams is replacing them. So they're going for when Wolf Hoffman said he's going for a 1982 sound. So I think they achieved that. I mean, it's a great song. It's hard. It kind of sounds like Stampede. Like the opening riff sounds like Stampede. Remember Stampede. Remember Stampede. All right. Everybody else? So any questions, anybody out there? You guys like the new songs? It's accept. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like and accept. even Wolf Hoffman says it's accept. That's all it is. So I mean, great. Gabby Hoffman say, asked me, Jimmy, how did you like the new song? Just send me an email the other day. I know it's style, it's you know, they've always had that that power chord kind of thing, heavy vibe, you know, and then the the growling, you know, vocals. I mean, that's that's them. It's you know, it's it's. Uh, I wouldn't say it's fresh, but it's you know, it's new, but it's their style. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying and it rocks. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I love the the chorus. Oh, as you see, it's falsetto on the chorus. On the chorus, you know, uh, repeating the verse for the rise of chaos, the rise of the chaos. Yeah, you know, it's your it's your metal chant. You know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool, man, and he sings great. Mark Tornillo is a great guy. Interesting enough, he's from New York, and probably around the same time Mark Reale was. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely, he's a New York boy. Yeah. So let's talk about Riot now. All right. Tell me what's going on in the Riot Five. What What are the updates in regards to the recording, and what are the updates and confirmed tour dates coming this summer? Coming this summer. We are recording presently. Um, it's taken a while. Um, we did a lot of the festivals and a little bit of touring last time. And, um, you know, when Unleash the Fire came out, um, we took a while to get that out too. Um, besides the fact that, you know, we didn't really know the future of the band after Mark passed, but we wanted, you know, we had to have a record, you know, that was a good representation, representation of the riot sound, you know, something Mark would be proud of and stuff. So, um, that took a while. And then the next one we were figuring, okay, but then we're, we're figuring this one's it just as important because it was like, well, was unleash the fire a fluke, you know, let's, you know, let's hear the next one. Let's hear the next delivery of the, you know, the, 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 the newer riot five anyway. So we've got, and this is crazy. We've got literally like 22 songs. <laughs> and this is probably the most that we've ever done. Um, usually when we record, we have, uh, you know, we'll have like, you know, the, the dozen songs and uh, we'll choose the best nine or 10 because that's usually what's on a CD right now. But we actually come up, I wrote like almost 12, 13 songs. Michael wrote like eight. Todd wrote uh, a ballad. So there's a lot of good stuff on there and we have to pick and choose. So what will end up happening is we'll release um, uh, a copy here in the U.S. and Europe with two bonus tracks out of that lot. And then for the Asian territories, we'll do the same thing, two different songs. So actually each one uh, that comes out, you'll have two bonus tracks of new material, not live, but, you know, stuff that's, uh, that's recorded. Anyway, we're looking at a end of year release, you know, November-ish. We switch labels. Um, uh, we moved to the uh, the new metal church label Rat Pack, who has Nuclear yeah. Blast distribution, and we have um, we're on Ward Records in Japan. So we made a couple moves to some bigger stuff. So that was really exciting. Um, Ward's got a big marketing plan for us um, over in Asia, where our biggest following is, and uh, Joe over at Rat Pack. They want to do the same thing they did with Metal Church. You know, blow them up, get them on good tours. Uh, you know, make them visible, real videos and stuff like that. So it's nice. Um, so that's what we're doing. We've been recording. Uh, and um, like I said, right now we're in the process of uh, 
Uh, we're actually uh, uh, recording and editing the drums. The producer is Chris Collier, the machine. He's familiar. He's done corn, uh, slipknot engineering, prong, flotsam, uh, uh, KXM, stuff like that. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be production, you know, that uh, I think is going to be really cool. Um, you know, I think something that we've never had, like a metal guy producing the band. But the songs are great. The tradition of Riot, power metal, you know, it, it's Thunder Still meets Unleash the Fire meets Fire Down Under. So, you know, we got something for everybody. So it's going to rock, man. Uh, we don't what really about have a title it? for it yet, but we have, you know, we have titles of all the songs. What'd you call it the metal voice? The metal voice. <laughs> call it the metal voice? Yeah. <laughs> we have Just toss it out. We ha I have a song in there called Raining Fire, which Whoa. I thought was a, a kind of a cool title, but uh, we have a lot of fires in our names, Fire Down Under and Leash of Fire. We got to get out of the fire. So, uh, but Raining Fire, there's a song called Victory, Heart of a Lion. Uh, Mike wrote Unbelief. End of the world, uh, the best I can. What else we got on there? Um, uh, it's quite a few songs. Like I said, you know, it's, it's a lot. It's it's groovy, man. It sounds it sounds really cool. Todd Michael Hall, top of his game. Um, you know, Frankie, all the guys, you know, putting into it. It's going to be great. So, so what great. confirmed so tour dates do you have? Tour dates do you have? Um, right now, you know, everything's hinging. You know, on the release of the record, all the agencies want product. You know, before they. Uh, want to do stuff like my uh, European agent, Jorg, he's like, when is the stuff, new stuff coming out? It's like, but we, uh, we have um, confirmed, you know, we're doing the Bang Your Head Festival in uh, July. Um, we've done that before. It's a great festival, 20, 30, you know, K people out there. We're doing it uh, with like Hammerfall, uh, Crocus, Vince Neil, Slaughter, uh, Raven, you know, um, uh, you know, a bunch of bands on. It's going to be really cool. Um, we got that. We got another festival, a smaller one in uh, Spain called the Skulls of Metal. We're headlining that. It's a smaller festival. They got like Manny Carlton from Nazareth and uh, some other bands like that, you know, playing uh, supporting and stuff. So that'll be groovy. And then we got some Belgian, some German dates coming up at like just venues. So, I mean, basically just stay tuned to the Facebook site or the, the website and, uh, you know, keep it up, uh, keep you updated on uh, stuff that gets added. We do have stuff that I can't say just yet, teaming up with other bands. Um, it's not concrete yet, so I can't really say anything, but he's got some stuff brewing for us. So That sounds amazing. And next year is going to be really amazing. cool, too. I'm, I'm trying not to talk too much because I'm, I'm getting feedback. I know you don't hear it, but everybody else does. But everybody else does. <laughs> Off question, Off question, latest Dragon Force album, your thoughts. I don't know, a guy just sent a message. What album? Dragon Force, their new album. When you heard it, it's like... Oh, da, 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 da. Man, you know, I might have heard snippets of it here and there on links that people share. You know, I'm familiar with the earlier stuff. Ah, you know, they're Dragon Force. Like, it's like Accept. They got a style and a sound. Um, whereas Accept is more, you know, power, you know, power chord... Uh, screaming vocals, they're a little bit more extreme power metal. You know, the, the players in there are top notch. Um, it's very fast. You know, it's very riffy. Uh, you know, um, don't listen to them a lot, but it's definitely quality. You know, when I do hear something, I, I pretty much knock it off who it is. And, you know, and I mean, they're good. You know what I Great mean? Band. It's a real good band. So how do you like my shirt, Donnie? So how do you like my shirt, Donnie? Unleash that T-shirt. <laughs> You can I pick it up it. at the Riot Fung right web, right web, right web Store. I love so, it. So, so the documentary. Okay, so it's coming out okay, so it's coming on, Wednesday. on Wednesday. I don't want to give away the documentary. You know, everybody, everybody knows, knows the story more or less, more but this is more detail. More detail. So, what are your so thoughts? thoughts? Just quickly, just a general, general thought about finally something being made to tell the story. Well, first of all, thanks for doing the documentary. It's long awaited. This band has more history than, I mean, a yeah. lot of bands out there, uh, you know, and, and uh, some of it's good, some of it's bad. And uh, I think, um, you know, it's about time someone's done it. Um, 
you know, when with the Anvil movie coming out, obviously that was the most picture, and that was pretty good too. But I mean, um, Riot's been so many, through so many uh, uh, changes. Uh, we had deaths in the family, um, managerial problems, um, label problems. I mean, the band's been beat to death by that. But documentary, at least you know, it'll show kind of you know everybody's point of view and and uh how it was back in the the late 70s like the uh the trailer that you know you had on there it's really cool to see peter Vitelli still around and phil fight you know uh, they talk about their stories with ryan that's really cool some of the stuff that you had on there i hadn't even seen so i mean that's that's how classic it is i mean i you know i grew up with mark and so he's showed me a lot of the stuff so i've seen a lot of the history but some of that stuff was real cool, but what they say is the truth. You know, I hear that all the time, you know, about the management problems, you know, and, and things, but the documentary is going to be really cool. You're going to talk to, uh, like, you know, you have, uh, early guys, you have the, you know, the transformation to the rat years then the thunder still years, uh, you know, the, the mini series, the the friggin mini series. Friggin mini series. The reunion. There's tons of <laughs> lineups and stuff. So it's amazing. Uh, it's I mean, okay, cool, this, part, this part just everybody really knows, like just it's multiple knows. parts. It's this is part one. And part one, one covers the formation, the formation up to about far down on down 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 under. Down and I mean that's just one part. I mean and that's not even covers everything. You're talking about this is a massive story. Of, story. of money, of, money, of music, music, which is very important here. Music, music, great music, great music an underrated band, and, and the tragedy of no one ever, you know, kind of like the band was about to make it, and then something bad happens all the way. It was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. Uh, like Peter summed it up, and Mark used to tell me some of these stories too, where, uh, where Kind of lost you there. Of, uh, lost you there. Am I still on? Yeah, you're good. You're good. Okay, good. I'm in I'm in Texas right now. I'm not in New York. I'm in Texas, and we're having really bad weather right now. So I could go black in a minute. I don't know. But anyway, right. um, yeah. So I mean, you know, these producers at Green Street Studios. You know, I'm not going to give away the whole story. You got to watch them on Wednesday, part one. But I mean, there's such a history. But I mean, basically. Um, you know, these producers, uh, Steve Lowe, Billy Arnell, we're going to do a basically um, compilation album, Best of New York Bands, which were, they, they were doing a lot of back then. Um, and they liked the way Riot's submissions were, so they ended up turning it into a full album. Phil was on it in the beginning, and then uh, L.A. was on it. And then before it even came out, you know, we saw their departure. So there was a lot of, a lot of stuff going on on the inside, you know, within that management and stuff like that. Um, which you know what's amazing? amazing? It's amazing it's that amazing throughout, that throughout that the history of Riot, riot throughout riot, all the throughout bad, bad member changes, changes. The, well, there was one constant there was factor, constant the music, the quality of the music, quality of the music throughout music, every era, throughout it was, every always, era was always, at always at its best. At its best. You know, right. even, though, you know, even though it was a switching and morphing switching into and different sort of power metal to hard rock to power metal to hard rock to power metal again. Mark used to say a good quote is, you know, the band's longevity is based on, you know, the product that they're putting out. And uh, he always used to think that the longevity of Riot, the reason why it has been so long on so many records, is because, uh, you know, the quality of music and, and players he's always had in the group, uh, you know, from the beginning. I mean, even when we switch gears, you know, you have the, you know, the major, th the first three, Rock City, Narita, and Fire Down Under, you kind of had that heavy hard rock sound and then when Rhett joined of course you know we went to straight hard rock and had that southern kind of vibe to it because of retro and then you know when i joined with mark you know i was more into the side of it because being from the texas slayer and i was in the into that get up and go so mark you know wanted to like move so that style and then when that you know fell apart and he did the DeMeo years it was more of that rainbow kind of white snaky kind of vibe, you know, different style, but quality music, you know what I mean? So he, he's been, he was good with that. I learned a lot uh, how to write a good song uh, from Mark and rather just a million riffs, you know, a good melody is, is what you're looking for, really. You know, it's so, interesting uh, thing about Mark too, as I was going through all the footage over the year that I've been doing this, 
it's it's kind of haunting in a way. You know, he's, kind of he's, he's, he's such a good humored he's guy, Mark. Good humored guy, Mark. Yes. He, he seemed like a very personable like person. Very personal like he person. really got every person he collaborated person with. Collaborated with. Seemed to like sort of gel like with these people. Gel. And, and you could see it was a real friendship a and real a musical relationship, relationship, relationship as well. Relationship as well. Is that a correct assessment? Is that a correct assessment? Yeah, I mean, besides the documentary that you're doing in parts, I mean, mean you could do a movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I have so many stories about the guy. I mean, you know, you'll see some of it in the documentary where you know, and some of it might not get covered because I mean, you know, that's it's almost like when we do a show, everybody's like, "What songs are you going to play? We want to hear this and this." It's like, dude, if we did two songs off of every Riot record, we'd be on stage for four hours. So yeah. you got to kind of like, you know, you trim it down and get to the points, you know, but I knew Mark long before I was in the band, you know, um, I started off as his friend. I remember going up to his house in um, Brooklyn where Riot started in the basement and it's connecting a flatbush on the corner. I lived with him. I slept on a cot in his room and uh, I watched, um, you know, the band perform. And um, he was like a bud. He would come to Texas and then I would go to New York. And when he would come to Texas, um, he would stay with me and we would do uh, we would do stuff like um, go to go camping. We went to Big Bend National Park and we camped out and we had campfires. He would play Willie Nelson songs with an acoustic guitar. This is all true stuff. And we would go to L.A., went to Universal Studios. Uh, rode the rides i mean just crazy stuff that you wouldn't uh you know you wouldn't think went to disneyland um he liked to travel he liked to take pictures he was in the movies in the beginning so he had a little eight millimeter video, uh, video camera back in the day we went to the grand canyon we took footage there um he was just a really cool guy i mean he was you know he was a great songwriter um when he was on stage and when he was in the studio he was full business but man outside of that we had some really, really good times. Um, you know, he became one of my best friends, not just a mentor when I got in the band, but, um, and, uh, you know, when he would be, uh, in Texas, you know, he'd be, uh, on a break from riot, like they would come back from a tour or something. He would keep my chops up, you know, um, can I jam with your band? And I was doing the Texas Slayer at the time. Um, Whatever happened, like Texas Slayer, just going off topic for a second. You had Slayer and you had Texas Slayer. What the hell happened there? Like, just, just explain it to me, please. Did I lose you? Oh, boy. Well, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Are we glitching? We're glitching. Okay, we got Slayer, the Slayer that we know, and then we had Slayer SA, right? San Antonio, I guess, right? Well, what happened, I mean, that's, a, that's another book right there, but what happened was way back uh, in my early days, um, I was in a band called Slayer, we released two records, uh, we actually came out before the LA Slayer, and when I think they did it, was it the, no, it was the first record, Show No Mercy, or maybe the EP, I forget, Haunting the Chapel, we were like, hey, there's another one, you know, and then we found out it was a Slagle band on Metal Blade, so we're like, okay, well, you know, it came down to the bands really didn't care. It was more like a label and a management thing who were like telling us, hey, you might have to change your name and whatnot and stuff like that. Go on the trademark. Uh, but anyway, it was to such a different style. You know, they were, you know, they're more, you know, death, satanic, thrash with Cookie Monster vocals. And we were like my style, like Riot. We were power metal with high a high singer. So it was totally different style of music, you know. But when, uh, you know, uh, we ended up, uh, when they put the SA in front of the SA Slayer for San Antonio Slayer, they did that after the band was, you know, broken up years. They just did that. And so not to confuse people or anything, but basically the reason why I kind of got out of the Slayer was when I ended up joining up with Mark. Um, he would, uh, come in the garage and, and jam with us. He'd bring his Charvel down and we'd play, um, we play, you know, cover songs, uh, and then we play some riot stuff with him. And then, um, he was like, Hey, we're going to be on hiatus for a while. Let's make a band. And that's when we made that band Narita with me, uh, Mark, uh, Dave McLean from machine head and Steve Cooper, the late Steve Cooper, he passed too. So we made that band Narita and we, we played shows. We did a little tour with loudness. 
Um, we played some riot songs and some stuff that me and Mark wrote, which were Thunder Steel, Fight or Fall, Crimson Storm. You know, we had those early on before we. And, and Donnie, let me ask you. So, so when Mark, so when so Mark, Mark went tri- Mark transitioned went from transition hard rock and blue at the time, time to power metal, to power I mean, metal. you can clearly I see that you're the one who actually influenced him to go into that power metal genre. Right. Power metal genre. right. So, I mean. I, well, because of. So, I mean, because of the Slayer, you know, when I was in there and he was jamming with us, he, uh, you know, he would hear Dave McLean, you know, playing the double bass. Like when we, we did pre-production for some uh, Born in America songs, um, when we were doing, uh, I co-wrote a few that I wasn't mentioned on, but Wings of Fire, Running from the Law and Gunfighter, me and Mark arranged it. And Wings of Fire, Dave was doing a double bass, you know, and he was like, wow. You know, but when Sandy, you know, did it it was more on a four-piece jazz kind of sound it was a shuffle so i think he liked that energy of that and then uh uh he he grew up listening you know he liked the beatles but you know later on he loved montrose he liked leslie west um those were favorite guitar players and then hanging out with us he started getting into like ingve malmstein he started getting into classical kind of players and he started just sitting there playing that kind of stuff you know and that's did he practice all the time all the time yeah, he was like, that's why on Thunder Still. He's just another guitarist you know, all together. Guitarist altogether. Yeah, you hear Born in America. That's the, right. The record that's before right. it is full on rock and roll. And then we do Thunder Still and he's doing arpeggios and dual leads. And his, uh, he was a player. He wanted, to, he wanted to keep up with the Joneses. He told me he wanted Thunder Still to be like, you know, you know, uh, uh, like the Fire Done Under of, you know, 1988 Judas Priest style with double bass high vocals and stuff like that. So, um, you know, that was, that was his vibe. You know, he was getting into, you know, heavier kind of music. He still, you know, he still loved the blues. That's his favorite music. He still loves rock and roll, but, um, he liked players. He liked Richie Blackmore. He liked Eddie, um, Randy. He liked, you know, all those bands. And I think it influenced him to, instead of, uh, you know, just stay where he's at, you know, expand. which usually, I mean, which usually what playing. guitars do once they've heard a certain, certain, certain amount of fame, fame you kind of stop practicing that's that. And that's that. that. But you don't see that in right. You're actually, you're actually no. a technical progression. technical progression. We play with like, you know, we, we let the Ulsters join us on stage sometimes like Lou and, uh, and Rick Ventura, they'll come out and play with us. And, uh, you know, we'll go into the, the Thunderstool stuff and they're just like, we can't play that. You it's know, a we're, we're two, from the, two that era spots. of rock and roll, you know, so that's why they don't really play that music with us. Whereas Mark, he uh, he kept, you know, he kept going till you know till the day he died. He would always practice his guitar and listen to, you know, music like that. He would just expand his horizons of playing, and you know, he he was just in that box just because he was influenced by Leslie Western rockers. He he liked that uh, you know, Malmsteen kind of stuff. And you could hear it later on in the DeMeo years and, you know, in, in uh, Thunder still besides that. I mean, that was, you know, he was he was a player, you know. Was there any direction he wanted to pursue, wanted to that, pursue that, that, you know, he talked about like close about to the end, maybe a Pink, Pink, Pink Floyd, Floyd direction, direction. I don't know. Direction, I don't like know. something completely like something different, different than, power than power metal. Yeah. Well, he was always, Mark was always big on a melody. Uh, no matter how aggressive and powerful the music was, no matter how many riffs were in the song, you had to have a melody line that people would remember. He was big on that. So you could have a song like Thunder Still that was just blazingly fast, and but it was really cool vocal, uh, cool melody on the chorus, Blood Streets. I mean, he was just real into, and that's where I got a lot of that from uh, in my songwriting because, you know, when I was younger in Slayer, it was just about playing riffs fast, you know, and then, you know, he taught me how to write, you know, he's like, write a melody over that. And I'm like, you know, so I do that to this day. I'm real conscious when I write a song, the melody is already there. So you fed off each other. Off off he learned you. off of you and you, you learned, learned off of him. And you, just... and you learned off of him. And you just... Yeah, we traded off. I mean, he gave me the freedom to write almost every song on Thundersteel. Um, you know, when I joined, uh, pretty much, I think I wrote every song on that album, but maybe one or two. I didn't, I wrote a part of Blood Streets, but that was him. And uh, I think, uh, we both collaborated uh, collaborated on Crimson Storm, but everything else I wrote. Thunder Still, Flight of the Warrior, Johnny's back. Um, Who's Johnny? Who's Johnny? Keep referring back Johnny. to Johnny. Probably, people don't, to Johnny. Probably people don't know Johnny is. 
the Johnnies. Is it the seal? Tim Lizzie used a lot of Johnny. <laughs> There's always a Johnny reference. There's always a Johnny reference. We should have called it Donnie's back. That would have <laughs> made more sense. But uh, all right, listen. No, he's like he, right, listen. he's like a character, you know. I got you. I got That's you. all. So, so here we go. So Riot 5 is in the so studio. We're expecting an album when? Expecting an album when? Uh, I want to say um, November-ish. That's when the, the label wants it delivered. So right now, like I said, we're in the middle of the, uh, you know, the, the laying the drums, editing, and then we'll start stacking everything else on it. So we're looking at November. Uh, okay. Those dates, like I said, uh, the Bang Your Head July and the other dates in August. And then... Uh, we might do another ship. There's talking about a ship, uh, 70,000 tons. Um, also, um, uh, next year, 2018, is the, speaking of Thunder Still and me joining Riot, 2018 is the 30th anniversary of Thunder Steel. Isn't that crazy? crazy? So we are planning a lot of stuff. And I will let you know firsthand uh, here on the Metal Voice that... We are playing Loud Park 2018, Thunder Still, wow. 30th anniversary, wow. like we did with Fire Down from start to finish, starting with Thunder Still all the way to Buried Alive. And we will bring Tony Moore and Bobby Jarzombek with us. So there you go. Some, some insanity. Not to say that Frank's not, not a beast Frank's on the drums, but drum. it's like insane. It's like insane. Yeah, well, I mean, he'll, he'll be there. We should, we'll still do our stuff, like we did with Rick. We played Fire Down Under from top to yeah, bottom, yeah. and then... Uh, we had to play like four or five more to, you know, to finish the set. And um, we're going to do that at a couple places. We've been approached by Sweden Rock, you know, once the vibe got out there that we were doing that. Um, a lot of people are, are, are pretty jazzed about it. A few other things happening in 2018, too. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'm at liberty to say yet, but. So, yeah, it's all good. So, 2018, loud part. We might be, in, we might be inducted somewhere, too, I believe. So that's, that's pretty that's, groovy, man. Wow. Well deserved. Well deserved, well deserved, I, say. well deserved I say. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So let's so, just summarize here. Summarize here. You're, getting you're getting an award. You're doing loud part loud with part. the 2018 with Tony Moore and uh, Moore Bobby Jarzombek. Uh, a loud part, right? Uh, and you're celebrating the 30 years of Thunder Riot yeah, Tour. I'm going to do a few days. I'm sorry? Sorry? Yeah, we're going to do that in a few days. We, we talked to Tony and we talked to Bobby, so it's going to be cool. We'll keep you posted, though. Okay. Okay. And, and we have the Riot documentary Riot coming out on Wednesday, 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 in two days, three days. Two days part three one. Days. Part one. Part one part of the saga. Part one of the saga. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's the rise of, and the, the rise of chaos, I accept, we both give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up. Gabby Hoffman Gabby will not have my hand. I give it, okay. I give it okay. the uh, tequila tilt. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we do a stream, I'll, I'll give everybody more of an advance notice. We kind of just went live just for the heck of it on a Sunday, on a Sunday uh, afternoon. Yep. All right, man. So that's it. We're, uh, we're going to let everybody go. All right. I'll keep you uh, posted, Donnie. You keep me posted. And... Uh, We'll talk soon, everybody. So, on the Metal Voice, you can catch part one of the documentary. Sorry for the feedback. Shine on. All right, brother. Bye. Bye.